So something I get like a lot in working with the label and uh, working with students a lot of the time is uh, this kind of problem around like, how do you get your music from like your bedroom or your studio, your headphones into like this release state, right? And I think a lot of the information you see online is about like the practicalities, right? So it's like, um, you know, you need to go to use this service, you need to use, uh, like there's a kind of professional tinge to all of it. And for anyone who's kind of watched this channel so far, um, would probably pick up on like professionalism isn't exactly something I'm, uh, uh, you know, I have, a, I have some difficulties with it. Uh, the reason being is there's there's a kind of assumption around how you're meant to behave with this sort of stuff and, and kind of the things that you're looking for and the activities that you should be doing and how you should sound. And I think if all those things are applicable to you, then obviously, like, you know, you've there's a massive amount of resources out there. Um, I get immediately called back to, like, the 80s because I'm old and you get, like, the 80s pop movement. Um, and you have a lot of those artists that were coming out of, like, electronic kind of uh, sort of, sort of abstract creativity right through for electronic synthesizers and then suddenly find themselves as sort of pop artists and kind of on in the charts and things and being talked about in a certain way and then this narrative just kind of continues and then they're sort of like they lose kind of what senses are and you see this even in the music sometimes that they'll suddenly be creating more pop music and if you track like the music output from what we consider like 80s synth pop from the early 80s to the late 80s you get it, things get really sugary um so i'm kind of really wary of that um and i think it it, it sort of bodes well just to kind of really look into what it is that you're really trying to do and how you want to do it and then how of, of often how really unhelpful the platforms and systems that we've got in place currently help you support that. So the assumptions I'm talking about, right, is like you've done this music, you might not have considered yourself like an artist yet and all of a sudden you're, you're supposed to or you might not have considered... Um, you know how this music sits together and all of a sudden you haven't got enough material to make a release because you know it needs to be x amount of tracks or something um there's also the question of mastering there's also the question of the service you use where does it live um and then how do people find it right so then there's marketing and there's all this kind of other stuff i like if you're anything like me none of that none of that has anything to do with the experience that i've had making that music it's all just kind of capitalist stuff right whatever your view of capitalism is, that's what it is. So what? how do you navigate that? Um, and kind of, I'm just going to speak from sort of my experiences because these are kind of the things I've had to kind of go through and still going through. Um, I think there's a lot. So like even, so if we go back to the first thing I had released and that was with me and my partner, we had this thing out on this sort of uh, electronic label um, and uh, there was a lot of comfort in sort of creating a project that I sort of had some emotional disassociation with, right? That, um, that I didn't feel completely uh, the owner of it. There was two people, kind of a bit like a band, I suppose. So um, I've not been in bands before and I wouldn't really call... I wouldn't really think of that as a band, but from my experience of speaking to other people who do work in bands, there's kind of enough of a, you can kind of find your role and you've got some kind of group support, et cetera. And things can kind of move that way. So sort of seeing it come from like experimentations in the studio to them being a release on as a digital initially and then a CD was like, this is cool, right? This was easy. Like this was, there was no problem. And to be fair, we kind of, you know, got lost in our own, artistic world a little bit maybe probably edged on the to side of pretentious <laughs> at times maybe but uh, i think it was highly conceptual so that allowed us that sort of flexibility to just sort of be kind of playful with it um it wasn't until like me and my partner stopped working together on this project that it was sort of i become aware of how long it had been since i'd made music on my own and and all those kind of experiences that i'd had previously that i kind of felt had dealt with the you know the, the difficulties of putting yourself out there like i mentioned previously um were uh, were actually still there because it was actually me now it was just me on my own and what do i do right how do i look how do i sound what what do people think of what i do, what i'm you know what i'm creating um and that suddenly become very uh i just become paralyzed i could not could not do anything i couldn't create i got in my own head etc so one of the things i did was uh like a blog like an audio and written blog where i just 
tackled using um, the Nord uh, G1 synthesizer, like a modular sort of synthesizer that's both sort of hardware virtual. And it's kind of like quite a tricky thing to use. And I felt like uh, using that on a daily basis and then publishing those sort of sketches, as I called them originally, were, uh, were a way to kind of daily deal with the problem that I was facing around kind of putting stuff out. So this way, I wasn't really releasing anything. I was just sort of sharing sketches. That was kind of how I had it in my head. I used to do a similar thing with web development when I worked in that area, that um, everything was in beta, nothing actually was committed. <laughs> so if you caught me out and said, well, there's a bit of code here, I was like, well, you know, it's, it's in beta, so it's fine. Um, so there you can kind of see that hesitancy to kind of commit. So that blog was really helpful because one of the things that stood out was, you know, the people that were listening to it, and this phrase, the people, is going to come up a lot. Uh, the people will, who were listening to it were like, I love your tracks. And the first thing I would find myself doing is that, oh, wait, 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 these aren't tracks. Like, don't judge me based on this. These are just sketches. And it become evident quite quickly that the difference between what was a sketch and what was a track, i.e. kind of what was work in progress and what was finished, was in my head, entirely in my head. Um, or at least in the heads of those people that received it. And for some people, it, you know, it isn't in their mind. It's just they're enjoying it. Um, so this kind of was like opened up a whole area of like, what could I do? Or how, in fact, how little could I do? to that warrant a piece of music, to that warrant being something that's finished. Um, and that blog was what started the label that uh, you may see sometimes in me referring to it and sometimes in the description or always in the description actually, um, links to different, different stuff. Um, and even that in itself was a journey of trying to kind of get like uh, the idea of putting stuff out under your own control, getting in your own way. Um, so I feel like from from uh, actually I probably forgot just prior to uh, just prior to the label there was another record that came out. So my first record that was my name was released by a label based in out of Malmo uh, called Sonuous. And this label isn't you know isn't going anymore, so you can't buy this thing. And if you can, I'm not going to get any support for it. But I'm, I don't care much for that anyway. You should just do what you want to do. But um, the interesting thing about this record was. I got in my head again. I'm like, how do I get these tracks finished? How do I send them? Are they good enough? And the uh, the label owner Finn um, kind of picked some of the uploads that I'd created and uh, as as a kind of uh, starting points or reference points. If I can, I can I if I can make these into tracks, then that would be great for the 12 inch. Uh, that was the other thing. It was going to be a 12 inch, which is you know in my in my grand old age, that's supposed to be a big deal i don't know if it was a big deal for me but it seemed it's it's supposed to be um so i set myself this target i thought you know what if i can just bang these tracks out this weekend and kind of finish them at a certain state that is uh that that, that finn likes then who's to say that i don't like him right like maybe i need to take time to like this stuff maybe i need months maybe i need years but let that not get in the way of the record coming out so i made these tracks put them together really quick over the weekend. So literally like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, send them off Sunday night, uh, figuring, figuring Finn's going to reply back and say, you need to work on them more. And he didn't. He said, these are great. We're going to put a record out. So I thought, well, well, that was easy. <laughs> um, and it just happened. So the next thing that was the, the learning for me was when the record arrived in the post and I look at it and I'm thinking, I'm supposed to feel some, you know, excitement here. I'm supposed to feel like there we've made it or... I don't know, uh, some sense of sort of like gratitude or I don't know. And there's a mixture of feelings there, right? But um, they weren't what I expected. I didn't know what to expect really, but I think that excitement of building up to something is kind of not necessarily, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not ne necessarily going to lead to the outcome you might anticipate, right? It's just, it is what it is. And it was kind of quite humbling to sort of, appreciate that experience for what it was and i've shared that with quite a few other artist friends since then and normally get a surprise look but i think it's i think it's brilliant right you can just you don't need to necessarily even like what you do you don't even necessarily need to feel happy about it it can just be the experience that it is so this has kind of been kind of the underpinning for a lot of the artists i work with with the label and uh, just different collaborative projects in general 
um, with the students, like I said at the start, um, and trying to kind of see if we can, we can find together like a perspective that helps them kind of move forward in whatever direction that is for them. And I think the lock-in that we can tend to have on it having to be a record, that it having to be a release, comes with this massive amount of baggage and the assumptions around what that world is, is uh, and, and they are assumptions because we're not in it yet, that, uh, that we need to be fulfilled in some way and that that's the ultimate goal. And maybe it is for some people, for sure, but it doesn't mean that is always the case. And I say certainly from my experience of working with sort of more underground electronic artists, people that have never released stuff, people that haven't released stuff for a while, or even people that have released stuff quite a lot and just kind of are a bit jaded by the idea or just trying to look for something else. Um, the assumption of that experience is always fixed is 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 a mistake, I think. It's, it can kind of lead us into kind of uh, lots of kind of negative spirals. Um, so yeah, the the I feel that... that um, there's lots of different practices I found were quite useful. Uh, one thing was coming up lots of different names. So lots of different artist names in, in trying to compartmentalize like how I'm thinking about my music. Oh, this is this sound. This artist is that sound. That was quite helpful for a while. Um, but really, I ended up locking into a different problem of like, oh, well, I need to make music for that style. So therefore, I couldn't move, even though it's Muse to find a bloody style in the first place. Muse come up with a name in the first place, and I feel like I'm a prisoner of my own making. So which kind of led me to like not being credited at all. And therefore it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter like what I do because nobody knows it's me. I don't even have to consider it me. And all these kind of steps are sort of, I feel like on a, I hate to say on a journey because I, I feel like vomiting <laughs> in, my, my own, in my own mouth, but it kind of is like just trying to work out like how the fuck do I make sense of this and what works for me and and not getting bogged down with like the supposed ways you should or shouldn't do something and the assumption that you should make money the assumption that you should be successful the assumption that you should be recognized the assumption that you should have a brand the assumption that you should have an artist name the assumption that there should be legal implications if you breach legal laws right like all of that stuff is systematic bs and we don't necessarily need to have that in mind when we just create music we don't necessarily have that often in mind when we just create music it's just this bombardment of bollocks that comes like at the end of like when we're kind of putting it out there and i find we see that within systems a lot like i like bandcamp or spotify or whatever platform that you might uh find is useful it's really integrated into supporting the majority even like you know so take Bandcamp. Bandcamp is marketed as sort of like, I think I remember their first marketing sort of spiel was like, hey, we listen to music, which from the perspective of like, hey, we're like you, like find me someone who doesn't listen to music, <laughs> right? They seem, I mean, they're a great platform for what they do, but they are a, they are a service that provides data storage and delivery, right? And there's a whole market around that. And undoubtedly, they've got an impact on the market and it's changed the way that we consume music. There's undoubtedly huge uh, importance there. But that doesn't mean that we should assume that we adopt everything they do as the preferred way of working, right? The preferred way of putting music out. And a lot of their models were, um, you know, but really borrowed from yesteryear's era, like of, uh, you know, we have a cover, we have an artist name, we have a track name, we have... Um, you know, merchandise, all the kind of terminology is kind of like of a bygone era to some degree. And that the industry is sort of on, constantly in, in flux. Um, and I think if we're creative people, that can sometimes be quite jarring. Like we have to find where we fit in the puzzle that's already been made. Um, so yeah, as you might see in the descriptions, like all the bloody releases, like we've got, they're non-credited. They're like, we're trying to play around with the system as a way to kind of find out what works. Even this video itself, even sitting in front of a camera is a way of like, how can we deal with the platform of YouTube in a way that isn't conforming to the normal typical stuff that YouTube offers all the time? And there's a reason why people want to do that because they want to be successful, yada, yada, yada. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like having, uh, I think going through, the thing I found most useful was going through that experience of creating something and putting it out there in a way that is, uh, allowing you to live that experience and allowing you to kind of like work out what it is and not feel like locked into having to do a certain thing. So if it, you know, if it's not successful, like think about what sex success is and why do you want it so much? Like, um, you know, or if it's not like one of the big fears is like, 
if I upload this to Bandcamp, first of all, like, is that really a release? You're just uploading it to a service that's offering it. So there's an element of like, I don't even know what this is anymore. Like what's stopping me doing that on someone else doing that? So there's an, there's definitely a degree of like it being available and, and critiqued or accessed in some way without your knowledge by the public. And I'd say that's where I'm at at the moment. That's kind of like the baseline of what release is um, into the public. And then the next question is like, well, what are the public going to do? What if they, like for me, it was like, what if, what if this does really well, then how am I going to deal with all the shit that comes afterwards? And then the next thing is, well, actually, what if no one gives a shit? Like what if, and then that, and I, I kind of want to people, I guess I want people to listen to it because I've uploaded it. So then I've got to go and tell people about it. So it just, it just gets really messy. So I find that, that, that separation of what you're doing and just the output living as an output in whatever form it needs to take is been the most helpful for me not considering it a release not considering it successful or not not trying to not consider any of these words that we might typically attach to releasing music but just think of it as an output and then it immediately extends to outputs that are like not like releases but they're also just things that you've done in your studio that don't get shared it's still an output things that you just share with one or two people it's still an output a project that you've worked on that hasn't ever seen the light of day after the massive amount of intention is an output like and there's experiences and learnings to learn to take from all of that um and the assumption that you seen you need to sort of quantify that in some way measured against the capitalist model is kind of kind of crazy from a creative perspective right if you want to earn loads of money then you know um probably best get into stocks and shares right <laughs> or like get in the digital sector like invest in ai or something i don't know but like music's uh music's a bit more complicated i find um see so yeah, i don't know i'm just kind of kicking some stuff around and seeing uh some of the reason of the, doing these videos is just to kind of think out loud about this stuff see how my mind works out in the open and i guess there's a hope that maybe uh this isn't this i mean put it this way the last thing i would want this to be is that you listen to this and think great that's the answer it's not it's the it's the question right what is what did we want to do what is the answer how do we find it and 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 be explorative if experimental uh challenging poke at stuff these are just because everything's just kind of you know all these systems are human made anyway and we're we're humans unless i'm speaking to ai at this point but um anyway i'm gonna leave it there because i can ramble forever and i feel exhausted and need a coffee so um nice one i will catch you in the next video there will be music as well at some point someone cheers